It all began many, many years ago with a little boy who was a prince of Persia. The prince's name was Zargon, who loved to study the ancient scrolls with his faithful servant Mustafa. While studying the scrolls, he found a prophecy about a coming king. And as he grew older, he gathered the wisest men, even in the land, to study the prophecy. One day, he saw a sign in the night sky that would change everything. Let the story begin! Astrology or cups of tea. Come and join the wisest men in the palace of Zargon. Welcome to Persia. Follow me. There you see, the course of the star points directly to Judah, just as I had told you. I'm telling you, the birth of the king is that way, my friends. Let's see here, this Judah here, if it's not on the map. You've had your head in scrolls far too long, my friend. Ah, listen to this. To, but you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, you are not in any way least or insignificant among the chief cities of Judah. For from you shall come forth a ruler who will govern and shepherd my people Israel. I will find my king, will live for him, will bring him gifts. But what can I give to the king of all the universe? I will find him, for I need to know what's made him come into this time. The time has come, what we've been waiting for so long is happening before. Well, I'm going, friends. There is no more time to lose. Who is coming with me? I will go with you for sure. Where's Bethlehem again? Here, let me see. Judah, Judah. Oh, here it is, Bethlehem. What? To go there and be nothing but dust and burning heat? No, thank you. Everyone will laugh. <laughs> but my friend, this journey will change the course of history. We will never be the same again. Now, friends, we must prepare. We're going to need food and camels. Don't forget the food. And gifts for the king. I believe gold is a good gift for a king. What do you think? I'll bring frankincense for his divinity. And I will bring him myrrh. <laughs> well, you three go on ahead. For my wife, Princess Adina, is about to give birth, and I cannot miss the birth of my child. May God be with you on your journey, my friends. Mustafa, we must prepare for the journey. As soon as my child is born, we will join my friends to Bethlehem to find the newborn king. We will also bring the three gifts that we can give to the king. Here is a ruby, a sapphire, and a jewel. Where are we going, Master? We're going to Bethlehem. Ooh, the Bahamas. I'll pack my clippers. No, 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 no. I said Bethlehem, my friend. Well... Is there a beach? There's the Dead Sea. Sounds charming. <laughs> My friend, this journey will change our lives forever. Yeah, that's what I'm worried about. <laughs> a few days later, the bells rang for celebration, for Princess Adina had delivered a beautiful son. 
They named him Eleazar, which means God will help. Little did they know how much help they would actually need on this journey. After Eleazar was born, Zargon and Mustafa were preparing to leave on the journey to find their king. Zargon wept bittersweet tears as he kissed his son's tiny neck and said a blessing over his family. The brave princess, she waved and fought back her own tears as she saw them set off on the journey to the land of Judah. After many months under the burning sun, with sand everywhere, they were running low on fresh water, lost, exhausted, and seamlessly hopeless. They crossed another valley, they climbed another mountain, and through parched lips, Zargon finally cried out, Oh, Bethlehem, this is Bottle Hill? Not even a king donkey will want to be born here. Better want a king. Maybe you were wrong. Maybe it was the Bahamas after all? No, it was Bethlehem. I knew I should have packed my snorkel. Oh, good sir, good sir, may I trouble you for a moment? Can you guide me to the newborn king? Newborn king? Yes, can you give me the location of his palace? Palace? Here? In Bethlehem? No. Our king doesn't live in Jerusalem. You see? No king would want to be born here in Bethlehem. It's Bethlehem, Mustafa. That's what I said. <laughs> and now we've got to go all the way to Jerusalem. You mean Jerusalem? That's exactly what I said. <laughs> Sir, there is no need for a king here in Jerusalem, but there are kings in the Northern Palace in Bethlehem. That's what I told him. But did he listen? No. No. My apologies for the trouble, sir. Farewell. So, now what? Bahamas? Mustafa, I don't understand. The prophecy clearly said Bethlehem. Well, maybe the prophecy was wrong. Mustafa, we will continue our search. I will not give up. Did you excuse me, sir? I saw the child speak up. You saw him? You saw the king? Yes, in a cage way off. A mother and a father laid him in a manger, and then these three men showed up, overdressed, just like you. Mustafa, did you hear this? My friends, they found the king. Yes, one night we're in the field. One night in the fields, an angel appeared for us, singing glory, glory, glory. To God in the highest, peace on earth, goodwill toward men. Wow, that felt pretty good, didn't it? 
Back in the game, saving babies, kicking the enemies. And Mustafa, we must continue our search. Continue? Master, we've lost everything. The tent, the binoculars, the GPS. <laughs> Mustafa, the Lord will show us the way. With all due respect, Master, he said that the last time. Mustafa, you must guard your heart and do not lose hope. Have faith, because God will guide us to our destiny. Our destiny. I can settle for a shower. <laughs> Two years had passed. Zargon and Mustafa had traveled all over Judah, through deserts and mountains, on their quest to find the baby king. With each day, their hope waned, and once again, they found themselves far from home. The rocks, the mountains, and the dry valleys, they all looked the same. And once more, Zargon and Mustafa wondered. The cloudy nights, they hindered their progress. And the traveling by day, it felt like they were going in circles, round and around. Once again, they were lost. Mustafa pleaded with his master, let's go back and return to Persia, but he would not give up. Zargon read those scrolls a thousand times, but he would not give up to find the king. Any news, Master? I will teach you and instruct you in the way that you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. Do not be as the stubborn horse or mule, which have no understanding. Hey, why'd you look at me when you said stubborn mule? <laughs> Master, this is hopeless. Finding this baby is like finding a needle in a haystack. That burst quickly, we must hide. your name, my son? Ruben. Ruben, that is a good name. Mustafa, take the sapphire to Jericho. Buy all the food and supplies you can and bring them back. We must help treat these people. Treat? But this is the baby's Christmas present, remember? Mustafa, we cannot leave these people without help when help is within our power. Mustafa knew they were going to be there for a very long time. He headed into Jericho, sold the sapphire for food and medication for the lepers. Zargon was able to relieve much of their suffering, although he could never completely heal them. That night, Reuben's father breathed his last breath, and he said to Zargon, I beg you, take care of my son. You will be his Abba now. At that moment, Mustafa knew they were there to stay until three years had passed. One day, Zargon told Mustafa what he dreaded to ever hear. He too got infected with leprosy. He told Mustafa to go home and take care of his wife and son. Brokenhearted, Mustafa left Zargon and returned to Persia. Zargon made Mustafa promise to tell his family that he was dead. There seemed to be no hope. It was the hardest thing Mustafa ever had done. But he knew his master was right, for there was nothing to be done. And so Mustafa told Zargon's wife and son that he was dead. As the years went by, the constant wondering began to drive Mustafa curious. Was Zargon still alive? Finally, Mustafa sent a messenger to discover the truth and he returned and told him the news that he feared the most above anything else. Zargon was alive! He could no longer hide the truth from Adina and Eleazar. Now, the boy, a fine young man, insisted that they returned and find his father. And so, 30 years after 30 years, Mustafa returned to find Zargon and present him with the greatest surprise his life.
Master! Mustafa, is that you? I'm so sorry. I should have never left you. No, you did the right thing, Mustafa. Tell me, my son, my wife, how are they? Father, this is your son. My son? Oh, my son. As soon as we heard you were still living, I insisted that Mustafa and I come back to find you. No, 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 stay away from me, my son. I love you more than my life, but I will not risk the well-being of my family. Your wife has the finest doctors. They wait for you in Persia. There is no reason that you cannot come back with us. No, I cannot go. These people here, they need me. I must help them. But I've waited to see you my entire life. I won't leave you. Not like this. David, son of Elion, I call his name, Yeshua, Master, please have mercy upon me, you son of David, do not turn away from me. your king when all my hope was gone his words restored my soul i am forever whole i found your king his love reached out to me he spoke Yeshua. His name is Yeshua. Reuben, Mustafa, do you believe that this is the man that we've been searching for so long? Yes, I believe he is. I believe he is the Messiah. I believe it with all of my heart. As for you, you have given your life for us. You have cared for us for so long. Please, go and find him. Go and find Yeshua. I know that he is the Messiah. I know it very deep within my heart. If you go to him, he is going to heal you as well. We can go together, Father. He can heal you too. And we can return home with mother. I still have one gift that I can give to him. I will find my king. Will live for him and bring my gift. But what can I give to the king of all the universe? I will find him, for I need to know what made him come into this earth. Zargon was shining. A youthful determination appeared on his face. No one could deny him of the miracle he saw before him, for Reuben, who was once sick, was healed. Rumors came to Zargon and Mustafa that the coming king of the Jews would be in Jerusalem for the Feast of Unleavened Bread. So they set on a quest. 
Zargon was at the end of his strength, his last chance to find the king. The road from Jericho to Jerusalem was steep and difficult, especially for Zargon, and it exhausted him. But their hope carried them all, and the journey provided Zargon to learn more about his son Eleazar and catch up on 30 years he had missed. After several days, they were coming to the end of their strength. The night was closing in around them as they approached the end of the cliff. And there, in the mist, moonlight, they saw Jerusalem. Zargon's strength was failing as they approached the city walls. He used everything he had to make the journey from Jericho to Jerusalem. Now, he had nothing. You're so close. Keep it up. You can do this. Look, Father, it's the wall of Jerusalem. Your king is inside. No, I cannot enter the city. It is too dangerous. But you have to. You must be healed by Jesus. Mustafa, do you still have my gift? Yes. Go. Find him. And give him my gift. Don't worry, Father. We will bring the king to you. Yes. Ruben, remain here with Zargon, and Eleazar and I will find Yeshua and we'll bring him to you. Come, we must go. Excuse me, I need to find the king of the Jews. No, I need Yeshua, the king of the Jews. Help! 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 I need some money. My baby is sick. I need medicine. This is all that I have. Uh, um, you know, just like your father, give me the last gift to help somebody in need. How do you tell a man that his quest has failed, that everything he was searching for is not found but lost? Zargon's king, the reason he had left everything was to be crucified. With heaviest of hearts, Mustafa and Eleazar returned to find Reuben and Zargon. These are my sons, Eleazar and Reuben. 
Long ago, I came from Persia with my friends. We studied the stars and found an astronomical mystery that lined up with an ancient prophecy about a king whose kingdom will never end. So my friends set out to Bethlehem before me with the gifts of gold, fragrances, and mirror. I remember you, friends. They were the ones who told me that my son was going to be the greatest king to live. And now he's dead? I too came to Bethlehem to find you and to give you my gifts. But you were gone. We spent 30 years searching for your son. My master gave all that he can to help people that he met along the way. He helped this leper colony. And now he too is a leper. Never go home. If only I had kept the gifts. I could have saved his life. I could have stopped them from taking Yeshua's life. No one took his life. He gave it willingly. I came to find my king, to live for him and bring my gift. But here I am, I lost it all And now my king is dead If I had kept the gifts I could have saved the king of kings He gave his life I came too soul. late And now he's gone My life has been in vain to eat I never saw him when he was thirsty and weak you gave him to drink I never came when and he came. was naked and sick you took so good care of my king no I never saw him that I could give anything every one of the gifts you gave to the strangers you met on your way every tear that you shed through the years for the broken and lost you will dear all the dreams you gave up for this cause all the comfort and love that you lost everything that you did for the ones that you met on your Jesus said, everything you did for the least of my brothers, you did for me. you have done for him you have done for me father you have given your life you have given all of your gifts to him who is the least of the brothers everything that you have done for me you have done for him Reuben it's time for you to go home now go home to Adina tell her I found my king and tell her that I have found everything that I was searching for.
the sword. They're gone. You've been healed by Jesus. Yeshua! I found my king when all my hope was gone. His words restored my soul. I am forever whole. I found my king. His love reached out to me. beyond what words could ever express. Zargon and Mustafa had traveled a long, adventurous journey, but they all knew that the greatest miracle of all was Yeshua. The Prince of Peace had come into their hearts and given them purpose. They had found the King of Kings, born in a manger who gave all he had to serve us, to save us. He truly is the servant king. After 34 years, Zargon returned home and he had no presents to give his wife. But what he had to give was the most valuable possession any man had ever given, the heart of Christmas. The story of how God Almighty left heaven to be born on earth as a little baby. He became a man for a sole purpose of opening the door to the kingdom of heaven. Dying on the cross, he took upon himself the judgment for the sin of the whole world and gave us all the greatest gift of all, to be called children of God.